How you doing guys? It's Anthony here from DIY Auto Tech. Today we're going to be showing you how to install a light bar on your car, truck, or SUV. And we're going to show you using some of Oxbeam's LED light bar technology. When you order a light bar from Oxbeam Lighting, it's going to come with the light bar that you ordered, a nut and bolt kit to help bolt it to any vehicle of your choosing. It may or may not come with some external accessories and it may or may not come with a wiring harness. So you're gonna to need to check on each individual light whether those parts come with it or not. You can order a wiring harness for most of their lights and I do suggest doing that because it's very affordable and they're made specifically for the light bars. And since you're installing this kit yourself, I would suggest going out and getting some scotch tape or painter's tape, a thin Sharpie, one much smaller than shown here, and some external nuts and bolts that are longer in size, between an inch and a half and two inches, quarter inch by 20, with some quarter inch washers, uh, quarter inch lock washers, and locking nylon locking nuts. The wiring harnesses look scary, but they're really not that bad. We'll hook up the red power wire and this black power wire, which helps to control the switch, and we can either do those in the cab or in the engine bay. We'll hook up the red power cable and the black ground cable in the engine bay, either to the battery or another power source. And these run the relays and the fuse links. And finally, we'll connect this big long black wire to the LED light bar itself. We can then secure our relays somewhere on the firewall or anywhere of your choosing. And we can stick on the on and off switch inside the cab. And that's the wiring harness. And if your LED light bar comes shipped looking like this without connector ends, that's no problem at all. Just visit my YouTube channel to watch and learn how to solder or crimp connectors onto wires. My channel can be found at www.youtube.com slash DIY Auto Tech. First thing we'll want to do is to disconnect this black negative cable of the battery and we're going to go ahead and cover the terminal end with a glove or a rag to make sure that this doesn't ground anywhere else on the frame and create a live circuit. Typically on the rear driver side firewall of the vehicle you're gonna find a wiring harness access area illuminated by my flashlight here. On your vehicle, what you're gonna to wanna to do is try and pop out this rubber grommet that is in the firewall, and you're gonna to wanna to cut a small slit in it to allow for an extra wire to fit through. Okay, now because this selector switch is just too big to try and cram through that little firewall there, uh, on most of your vehicles, what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to disconnect the selector switch from the aux beam wiring harness like that and then we're going to feed this smaller end through the firewall and that means crawling up under the driver's seat there uh, finding where the firewall hole is and we're going to take this portion of the clip we're going to put it through the firewall and leave this portion remaining in the vehicle As you can see, we've ran it through, and now we just need to pull it through our rubber grommet. You can see we've got our connector has come through here, and so we're just going to put this rubber grommet back in, and we'll mess with the rest of our wiring harness. And then go ahead and use the 3M sticky pad on the back of your selector switch, and stick it onto the dash. So you can see we have 3M backing. We'll peel it off, and you can stick it on just like we okay, have. We'll go ahead and take that wire we ran through the firewall and we'll reconnect it to our wiring harness. And now we can install everything under the engine bay. Oxbeam's kits comes with fused relays and what we're going to want to do with these is just bolt them up to the firewall. As you can see I already have one mounted right here. So we have it mounted somewhere near the battery so that the power and ground cables can go to the battery. So what you'll do is you'll mount this fused relay and you can tuck the fuse wherever you like. There's no mounting location for that. We'll take the red positive cable and mount it directly to the battery or a 12 volt circuit. We'll go ahead and take the negative cable and mount it to either a body ground or the battery. And if you start hearing some arcing or some electrical sounds, go ahead and grab your selector switch and make sure that the light is actually off. And it's always a good idea when you're running light bars to keep some extra 30 amp fuses laying around because that's what Oxbeam supplies with these kits is gonna be a 30 amp fuse that's in line. And guys, just a quick note with these cross series wiring harnesses, 
I did say that there were two relays, so you're gonna want about both relays up near the battery. And also there's another power and ground cable that you're gonna go ahead and run either in the engine bay, to use battery power for that as well, or you can run it through an accessory line within the driver compartment of the vehicle. So you'll just have to find an area with power and then anywhere that you can ground it, uh, such as a subframe. Okay, so just keep that in mind, even though I did not show that in the video, um, just keep that in mind for your cross series wiring harness. Then with your wiring harness, all that's left is gonna be your connector that goes to the light bar, and you're just gonna wanna shove that in somewhere tidy and run it to wherever your light bar is gonna be. So in this case, I would run it through the front grill under the headlight to get it up towards the front bumper. Once you run your wiring to wherever your light bar is gonna be, you can go ahead and pull it out, but we gotta set up the light bar first. So let's show you how to do that. Go ahead and start playing around with your light bar and see where you actually wanna set it up. Have a friend hold it in place for you and take a look from far away and see if you like the location. Do this with both brackets attached on both sides. So for me, about right there is ideal. Have your friend hold the light bar as still as possible while you take a very thin Sharpie and run it straight down through the bolt hole. It should give you a marking that looks like this. Then take two pieces of painter's tape or scotch tape and put it right over the top, making sure you're able to see your mark. And I'll do another piece over the top and I'll just draw a nice X. And right in that center point, is where I drill my hole. We're gonna use a quarter inch drill bit to drill this. The reason we're gonna go ahead and use that tape is because when we're drilling that hole, sometimes we'll get plastic bits or metal bits that might scratch the paint or scratch the bumper. And this helps to keep the paint from scratching or chipping. Also, when we're drilling this hole, it's beneficial if we can drill into some sort of frame, either metal or aluminum. So try and see if you can get into some aluminum or a metal, some sort of metal frame. Take off the tape, or what's left of it, on both sides, and test fit the product. Once your holes are drilled, we're gonna go ahead and use the supplied accessories, like this rubber base, to go underneath the bracket, and we'll go ahead and bolt up the light bar and the bracket assembly. This is gonna be where that second friend or brother is gonna go ahead and help you hold the light bar while you bolt it in. Once it's done bolted up, and you've got both the bracket bolts, and the LED light bar bolts all bolted up. Just kind of loosen up the bolts right here on both sides so that you can fine tune the angle of the light. We're gonna wanna keep this light shining so that it's not too low or not too high. Keep in mind this is an off-road only light so you cannot use this on the street. Meaning that these are used for off-highway vehicles only. And also if you'd like to secure your light bar a little more than normal, you can also buy some specialty bolts that have the holes filled in so that you can't get a tool in there. Now what I've done with this is I've actually just heated this bolt up and filled it with solder so that if someone were to try and steal this, they would have to heat the bolt up, remove the solder, and then get a tool in there in order to back the nut out. Last but not least, head into the vehicle and make sure that the light bar works. Turning it on now, look at that. Works great. All right guys, this concludes the video on how to install an aux beam LED light bar on your vehicle. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you'd like to see more videos about how to work on your vehicle or how to install different things or diagnose problems, visit my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash DIY Auto Tech. On behalf of aux beam technologies and myself at DIY Auto Tech, I wanna thank you for watching this video and I hope you get out there and enjoy your light bar. We'll see you next time.